In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create your own fantasy world map using Dungeon Draft by converting it from a battle map making tool to a world map making tool using my free art assets. I'll put a link in the description underneath the video, so make sure to download those assets if you'd like to follow along. What's great about using Dungeon Draft for the purpose of building our world is that it offers us two unique ways to approach the subject. The first approach is for those of you who aren't great at sketching an outline for your world map, or for those of you who'd like to get results quickly. And the second approach is one where we use a sketch, pre-designed map, or even the map we made in our first approach, to fine-tune it using the more detailed sculpting tools Dungeon Draft has to offer. For the first approach, I've turned our material tool here into an ocean building tool. It allows us to instantly create the foundation of our map, shaping the coastlines and continents by either painting the water around our continents or by alt-clicking the ocean we've poured onto our map to pull land masses from them. Not only does it allow us to generate the general shape of our world in an instant, it also allows us to paint textures right underneath the water layer to assign these continents the type of terrain we'd like to incorporate in our world setting. Next, we'll head into our object tool, where we'll find six different categories in the tag section that help us add some more detail to our map where most objects allow you to pick any custom color to help you customize the art style to your heart's content, a lot of objects have also been pre-painted to fit right in with the terrain brushes I've designed. Mountains and terrains being the obvious choice, as they're an extension of the terrain we will employ. Now, although it might seem trees do not come pre-prepared with some colors to help you along the way, you'll actually be able to find a series of pre-colored tree patterns in the Pattern tool. These patterns were designed to create massive tracts of forest and can be supplemented by the trees in our object tool by simply color picking the patterns directly. Another addition to the Pattern tool are my ground detail assets. They come in dirt, desert and grass variation and use the color picker to be adjusted to whatever type of terrain you'd like to equip it to. The way I go about using it is by simply selecting a shaded color from the hill or mountain assets we've dropped onto our map, before selecting the area we'd like to add a little detail to. You can obviously also go in the other direction by painting in some of the details first and then adjusting the color of the pattern layer afterwards. Last but not least, let's get into our path tool to add some more water features to our world, including rivers. Similar to building our outline of our world map, there are multiple ways to approach building these rivers. The easiest way is to have our path transition in from growing but that one requires a little cleanup to make it look good. So let's go with the second easiest way for this quick map and draw our rivers first, placing a river edge object on top of it. Now that I've shown you the quick and easy approach to building a map, let's get into our more time consuming but detailed approach I've used to create a simple world map of our own world which could be a lovely setting for an adventure set in a distant future or an alternate reality perhaps. To get us started, what I've done here is create a very basic sketch of the outline of our world map. Something you can scribble on a piece of paper, draw on top of an existing world map, or even from using a simple world generator tool to get you started. Instead of using the material tool, which instantly places a path and texture onto our maps, we'll decide to use the path and pattern tool instead. The reason for doing this is that the material tool is very limited in the paths that it can take to generate our coastline. And doing it by hand allows us to follow our outlines with exact precision. 
The only thing we need to keep in mind, of course, is to keep the black outline to the inside of our landmass and the blue water to the outside. A mistake I actually made later on while drawing in some of the lakes inside our continents. If you really want to be smart about this and learn from my journey of going through this whole process, is that you could place this outline on layer 2 of your design instead of layer 1. The reason for this is that later on, when we will be drawing the terrain details onto our map, we'll have to be a bit more precise in following the outline, instead of being able to draw it on quickly onto the layer below the ocean textures. Skipping ahead here, I've decided to move on to drawing the rivers on our map next, so I can get into a little bit more detail on how you can approach this subject in particular. As mentioned before, there are two ways to go about drawing rivers. Either you draw them onto the map using the path tool with end transitions, or you decide to set the transition in or out to grow. Using this simple trick makes it a lot easier and quicker to draw a river onto our map. But it does come with the downside that it pushes the line art inwards. There is a solution to this problem, however, and that is to simply redraw those warp lines using the line tool I've added. The same line tool I'll use here to reshape the mouths of some of my rivers. It's another example of how you can add a lot more detail to your world map. Although it does take quite a lot of time using both the line tool and the pattern tool to mask the original coastline. For this map in particular, I ended up deleting these details as I hadn't planned spending that much time into building this map as I would into a fantasy world I would actually end up using in my own games. If we skip ahead a bit more, we'll get to the part where I draw the ocean underneath my coastlines. It might seem like a time-consuming process, but doing it this way will actually allow us a lot more freedom later on, when we start painting in our terrain types. By having the water as a pattern, just like we had our ocean as a material before, it'll allow us to paint right underneath the oceans and blend the terrain types super easily. Now that we've set up the outlines of our land masses, let's take a closer look at some of the tools I have for adding in some detail to our oceans. Starting with a world compass, which is always a great addition to any fantasy world map. These designs can be customized to fit any color you'd like, or simply made to fit the color of our ocean to blend it. We can blend it even further by adding some line art that follows our cardinal directions here all the way to the edge of our continents. It's an excellent trick lots of cartographers use to add a lot more detail to our designs. Well, I think that about sums it up for all the tools I've redesigned for our world map making experiment. You're free to use them for whatever you'd like. I'll let the rest of this two hour video play out in high speed time lapse for those of you who'd like to watch the entire process. Until next time.